Steve Show. That can be found on YouTube, The Coach Steve Show. It can be found the podcast version on Spotify, Apple, Stitcher, Pandora, iHeartRadio, Google. If I already said that, it can be found anywhere that you can find a podcast. The Coach Steve Show can be found there. The Coach Steve Show YouTube channel and the blog version of the podcast and other things can be found on the coachsteveshow.blogspot.com. Please go check all of that out. Please leave a five-star review, four-star review, some type of review, thumbs up, like, subscribe, share out. If you don't like it, pretend like it never happened. But if you do, please tell a friend, share this out, get the word out. I appreciate it so much. I'm very grateful. I don't have a ton of viewers, but the ones that do listen, the ones that help me out, the ones that come on here and talk ball, I appreciate every single one of you. So let's get into today's episode on the Coach Steve Show. Continuing the videos that I want to do, and I guess podcast versions, but the videos I want to do are to help newer coaches, young coaches, people getting into this football coaching world, kind of know what they're going to get themselves into, and to give them my simple, stupid way of, of looking at things. I've coached high school football for uh, about 13 years, been at five different high schools of my own will, not being fired or anything, my own will of different things, seeing different things, talk to talk to some different people. I want to give whatever stupid knowledge I have, my stupid, simple way to help run maybe a simple air quote spread offense for people, but also give younger coaches that are literally getting into the game, no matter what age, age wise, a little older coaches that have never coached before they're getting to it. Some are starting from the ground up to help them in an interview. So when a coach says something, they may not know because they didn't learn that when they played. Like when I played high school ball, I didn't know what 10 personnel was, 11 personnel. I had no idea what that meant. I had no idea what mesh was. I had no idea about a lot of things. And that's because you're a player, and that's fine. Depends on what offense you play in. Depends on what your terminology your coaches use. I didn't know techniques. I knew when we ran 44 powers going to the four hole, which is technically the BC gap. Things like that. So just giving coaches a resource of how to be stupid simple, starting from the ground up, and we are continuing that today. Today, we're going to talk about gap scheme and run scheme. So if you're someone that's an offensive coordinator or someone that's coming into a position where maybe they need coaches, maybe you go down the freshman level, maybe you're doing a youth level and you're working with the high school and learning how to do things, and they say we are – or you're listening to a coach talk and they say we're gap scheme. We're, we're zone team. We're a little bit of a gap scheme and zone team. I'll get into triple option later because I don't want to insult any of those guys. I ran option in high school. But you've got option coaches. Like, So what does that all mean? Maybe you don't know. Like as a player, we ran 44 power. We ran this. I didn't know that was gap scheme. So to understand the gap scheme, to understand what zone means, can they incorporate into both? Can you run both? Are certain run plays that are supposed to be zone? Can you run them as a gap scheme? Well, that's what we're going to talk about. And the answer is yes. If you're an offensive coordinator, whatever, you can run both. Some guys are strictly gap scheme, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's traditionally teams that are just zone, and that's fine. You've got some that maybe have one gap and three zone, or I don't know if you can have that many. So they might have two zone and two gaps, two zone and one gap, and do variations of it. Yes, the answer is you could do both. Can you – have certain runs based off a gap scheme, but it's a zone. Absolutely you can, but you have to understand which one is which. Traditionally, gap scheme is is just what it sounds. We talked about where the gaps are. You're protecting the gap. In my world, it's almost like man blocking because you're telling them where they're lined up and you don't pass them off to people. So in traditional, like a couple of videos ago, if you watch, I gave an example of a gap scheme, which everybody runs and it's very popular, is power. Power is a gap scheme. And power, you are protecting a gap. You're telling them where to go. You're not starting to block somebody to move on to another person. So traditionally, gap scheme, it's a lot of down-down blocking to where a person is. You're protecting each gap. You pull somebody to insert somewhere on the line of scrimmage. That's a gap scheme. Power is a gap scheme. Trap is a, tra- is a gap scheme. Those are the big two for me 
and counter, your regular counter, GT counter. Those are gap schemes, and they're all very similar blocking schemes. So there are your gap run plays and what they traditionally are. Zone run plays. Zones are the other ones that you can do. Zones are more of, they call them areas. Like when you hear defense say we're playing a cover two zone, we're playing a cover three zone, they're responsible for an area. That's kind of what zone is when you're blocking. So with your linemen, you're going not diagonally, you're going up the field, but you can pass guys off. So for example, when you're running like an inside zone, that is giving the running back we're going inside. It's telling the lineman it's a zone. It is You're technically responsible for gaps, but you're more responsible to block somebody, more responsible for an area, and you can continue to move and you can continue to pass on your guy that you are initially blocking to somebody that is coming up to help you. Right here, I'll get into how you run zone later. We'll do a whole video on that later, but just a, I gave you a snippet of power before. Here's a snippet of what a zone could be. So I'm going to move my running back over here. So if we're running an inside zone right, and I'm just going to do traditional zone real quick. So when you're gap, we're protecting these gaps. We already know A gaps, B gaps, C gaps, however you want. When you're running zone, you have different rules. You're, you're taking a power up, power down step, picking the foot up, picking the foot, picking the foot up, putting it back down, however you want to do it. So right here we have an, an even man front. We have a five tech on the left. We have a one tech, which is the nose guard, three tech, which is the, the um, tackle. And the other end on the right side is a five tech. Right tackle is responsible for that because that's his zone. We're going inside zone right. He's on his right, so he's going to take him. Now, here's where you could pass someone off. Right guard's got someone head up, so his landmark's probably going to be the outside number and shoulder and armpit. Center doesn't have anybody on him, so he is aiming for this. So this guy knows if he goes to block here, but he, this guy starts to shoot inside, he knows the center's picking him up. So here's what I mean by zone. We're responsible for areas. So now he knows he's got to keep moving on to an area to the next guy. It could become a double team to that Mike linebacker. That's fine. Kind of similar thing here. The left guard's got a one tech. He's aiming for that number. But if this guy starts to shoot inside for some reason, left tackle is on his path to this area, we'll end up hitting him and take him. And it become a double to here or whatever. That's the difference in zone. Zone, they're responsible for areas. We talked about this already. If you run a gap scheme, it's a lot of down, down, down kick. Zone, that doesn't happen that way. So right here, if we ran power right out of spread or power read or whatever the case might be, it's a lot of down. So we already talked about gap down backer. He's coming down to here. If this guy continued, he's probably going to try to continue. Now the right guard's gap down backer as well. He's aiming for there. But this can also be a double team, but then they stick to there. Center blocks away. He's pulling around. We have our step pinch. So there's a little difference between your zone and your gap. We need to understand the difference between them when we explain them to coaches and explain them to our players. Now, can you have them be the same? Can you teach them to say, okay, this is kind of like a gap scheme, but it's also a zone? Well, absolutely. In my world, when, when teams run um, duo – and duo is where we've got double teams all over the place. So right here, if we still keep that same front, we got our five tech, we've got our one tech on the left side and a five tech. Then on the right side, we have a three tech and a five tech. Left guard kicks out or left tackle kicks out, right tackle kicks out. Depending on where you want the double teams to happen, center and left guard can double team the nose. Right guard will take on the three tech. Running back is picking a hole and going. So to some people, this can look like a gap scheme because they're blocking guys. But how are you going to teach it? Is it a zone if this is three tech? So if we start over, if we go to block, this three tech, we got our left tackle, right tackle kicking out. If this one tech decides, well, I'm going to shoot to the center. The left guard can just continue on his path to find somebody. So there... To me, and again, I'm stupid, but you're teaching a gap scheme, but there's also zone parts to this. Because now he left, you're going to continue on your path to go. So I think that the initial point, it, I don't think it is. The initial point you're looking at when you're running like power, you're running trap, you're running counter, it is a gap scheme. 
when you're teaching however zone you want to teach, inside zone, outside zone, wide zone, whatever it is, they're, you're telling them areas to pass on. Well, if you run like a duo where you're blocking just the line of scrimmage, if you run ISO, which is the exact same blocking, but you have an insert, the initial part up front can look like a gap scheme. It can look like a zone. But to me, if it disappears, you're continuing on your path. You're continuing to an area. So I think they can feed off each other. So if that's how you want to describe to your linemen, your kids, you can do that. So now you have up front, you have like a gap scheme, but then it can be a zone. But you have to understand the, the, the nuts and bolts of it when you're coming in, like power is a gap scheme, traps a gap scheme. Zones are their own different animal where, where they're, like I said, you could pass off a guy, especially on like wide zone. Uh, we'll talk about wide zone later on. But wide zone, you can definitely pass it off. So like the right tackle is aiming here. The right guard has to aim here. But if this guy shoots in, he knows the center is here. He can continue on his path. They're just taking longer angles. Like you can just pass guys on, and this is a stupid way to show it. But you have to understand gap scheme and zone, but they can also incorporate off of each other. You can describe them as they work off of each other. You can describe them to your players and your coaches. And again, this is all being stupid simple to get everybody to understand in a simple way to remember and know what exactly what's going on. And to the players, when you tell them we're running power, why are you running power? You can explain we are trying to protect the gap. When they're running zone and you explain it away and they say why, you explain how we're able to do this in the big picture because kids today are going to ask why. So again, like I said, some of these are going to be short, some are going to be long. This one, you have to understand the difference between gap scheme and run scheme. So when you go in and talk to the coach, they say we're heavy gap scheme. Well, now you have an understanding of, okay, power, trap, counter, GT counter, different things. Now, obviously, these coaches will teach you that's part of their job. But if you want to help you move up on the food chain. You want to be able to do the best you can for the players, the community, the program, the head coach, coming in with an understanding of what this is. And I know to some people, Steve, this, this looks stupid. Like we, this is baby stuff. We already know this one. This helps me out because I like to talk football. I'm a little crazy. We got to talk. There is a coach out there that does not know this. I want to be able to give back to that coach. There are coaches out here that do videos, podcasts, just talk to me, coaches I've coached for that have had to show me things. We cannot, we, as, we always say we cannot assume the players know what's going on. We cannot assume that young coaches or people that want to get into coaching, we cannot assume they know what this means. And it's okay if you guys don't know what this means. If you guys ever need anything from me, ask me and I will tell you. I will tell you my stupid, simple answer. And if you don't like my stupid, simple answer, I'm sorry, but I can point you in the direction of somebody else as well. So that's why I want to do these. Now we understand what kind of gap schemes. When we get into how I run power out of spread or how I've been a part of it, when I run zone, that will be a good one. You'll understand what I mean by the base of it can be gap scheme, but the end result of the play can look like a zone concepts. The initial blocking or part of the play of zone can have tweaks on it that looks like a gap scheme and just different things like the duos that hold a different animal when you run zone you get double teams all over the place it looks a little different so again just to understand and have little snippets of you understand what gap scheme is and zone teams or zone runs when we'll, we'll do videos on that but i just want to help coaches understand what they are so when they go coach a youth they're coaching freshmen they're getting that interview with an offensive coordinator. They're getting an interview with the head coach. They understand when you take over a program, you become a run game coordinator, an offensive coordinator, and you're trying to identify with what you want to run, what no, you know. Are you going to be gap scheme? Are you going to be zone team? Are you going to be both? Are you going to incorporate both? You're going to look at these run plays and do that. You have to understand what they are. Gaps are down, 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 kick out or insert wrap up of some point that can look different. Are you a zone team that says you're responsible for an area? That's fine. Or if you're a defensive coordinator, you have to be able to explain to your kids and that defense or to your kids on defense, hey, they run power, so they're responsible for these gap schemes. They are trying to block these gaps. They're trying to protect them. So I'm, again, I'm, I'm repeating myself. I just, there are some coaches out there that are not going to know this and that's okay. I want to help you. I am here for you. Short video, that's fine. Thank you guys so much for watching or listening wherever you're at. Again, 
Coach Steve Show on YouTube, the podcast, Spotify, Apple, Stitcher, Google, iHeartRadio, Pandora, wherever you find your podcast, that's where it is. Please like, subscribe, and share out. The blog form, the coachsteveshow.blogspot.com. Check out everything. There's going to be more articles on the blog, more videos, great conversations with coaches. There's going to be more videos coming. Please, if you don't like it, just pretend like it never happened. But if you like it, tell a friend, share it out, like and subscribe. Please and thank you. It takes nothing for that. It helps me out. And it's going to help me grow and to help other people. So again, guys, thank you so much. And I'll see you guys next time.